Open Muscle started off as a project to try to see if uh, pressure sensors on the forearm could be used with machine learning to predict finger movements. Today I'm working on U-Label, which is a joint effort between Ultimate Robotics and Open Muscle. We designed this to be used with a Diodario hand exerciser tool to apply the labels for machine learning. First, I need to remove the screws on the custom case that we made for everything. It is just a temporary case at the moment. When we sent this file to PCBWay, they asked us if we had the polarity right or the orientation for the Hall effect sensor correct, and it turned out that we didn't, even though I admitted that we had it correct, or I said that we had it correct. So we're gonna have to correct that here today. So the team from Ultima Robotics said the easiest way is to use a heat gun. I actually had to purchase a higher wattage heat gun uh, to get it hot enough for this. I don't have the most ideal setup, so I'm trying to use the tools that I have at my disposal to get this desoldered. I go in um, trying to grab this. I broke one on accident. Uh, this is actually catching on the bottom of the PCB. Uh, it's almost at the part. It's almost cold enough to solidify the solder. So I think that the the actual snips I was using was soaking up some of the heat and cooling down the solder. So now I'm trying to put it back ever so gracefully. And you can see it kind of stuck there and didn't want to go down all the way. Again, it kind of sucked the heat from, from that solder and this is sped up a little bit so you don't have to labor through the whole thing. Finally, finally, it gets hot enough and it goes down. And I just hope and cross my fingers that I didn't mess anything up uh, too terribly bad. I think it's at this point I realized that I lost one of the capacitors. This video is taken after me looking for it for quite a long while. Uh, somehow I managed to see it in the carpet. I do not know how this is possible, so I had to relish in this moment. Um, what's even funnier is that I lost this and dropped on the carpet a second time. Uh, and I can't remember if this video is from the first time I lost it or the second time. Uh, it kind of all blurs together. But one of the things that you need uh, when you're designing something like this, at least I need, is patience. So just again, this, this looked like a jungle. I had an extender lens for the Sony ZV-E10 and I figured, hey, I wanted to relish in the moment of victory when I found it. Uh, this, this is from my microscope, just to show you how small it is. That is the tip of an X-Acto blade. And apparently the capacitor is somewhat magnetized. And again, this capacitor isn't needed because it's just, help, it's just helping regulate the voltage for the Hall effect sensor. So it is actually on the data sheet. It's suggested that you have this 100 ferret. Uh, actually, I don't know what the... <laughs> not a 100 ferret. Yeah, don't listen to me. So anyways, this is me trying to put it on, and I realized that I didn't have the proper tools at my disposal, and this thing was just too tiny. So I had seen on TikTok where people were using flux to kind of use that to heat up everything, and it, it looked kind of fancy, and I don't really have a service mount set up. This is the first design that actually had service mounted components in <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the capacitor just flew away. So this is, uh, I had I had to get some items from Amazon, mostly that flux, and to get everything ready for this next part. So this is kind of another capacitor that I messed up on, and this is why I needed something else. Uh, you can see me trying to mess with it. Um, a couple of these capacitors came off. I ended up losing one that I haven't been able to find but they are tiny. This wasn't enough, so I, I, I went ahead and went to Amazon, got myself some solder flux. I don't know if this is the proper thing to use. It looked like it was. Um, I did not read the documentation, but I figured uh, this was the least expensive option, so hopefully it would uh, work properly. So I did uh, the top kind of screws on, I think counterclockwise or clockwise. It's pretty interesting. The tip of this needle is a gigantic. I, it was scary to look at. Uh, definitely not sharp, of course, but it was the perfect amount. I've even seen people use tweezers to actually take out the resin or the flux. I'm not quite sure what this is called. Uh, 
begin. I'm very new to the whole flux or surface mounted approach to electronics. Oh yeah, yeah, and the plungers on the inside, I tried to figure out whether or not to use a plunger. So okay, so I put the flux onto the board. Just, just having a little bit of issues. This literally is my first time ever attempting this. I'm just doing this without any instruction, seeing something on TikTok. I'm assuming this is what they were using and uh, just kind of going for it. Because sometimes, at least how I learn, you if I learn the hard way, um, the lesson sticks. It's not as fun, but uh, I, I end up learning. I did not actually get the bit recorded where it actually perfectly sunk into position. And that was like the, you know, what all those TikTok videos usually were showcasing um, was like replacing surface mounted components in this fashion. This is using some pogo pins. They have the SWD protocol uh, or the SWD single wire debug um, interface to program the NRF 52840. Yeah, sorry, this is the NRF 52832. This was not the first time that I flashed a board. It's the second time I flashed a board using this method. So lining up the pogo pins, making sure that it has power, um, having the proper items installed that allow this SWD uh, flash of and this isn't the bootloader, this is the firmware. Because the bootloader, you flash on first, and then the firmware. Again, this is also something that I'm learning. This whole project, um, I have, I've had to learn as I go along, but with a little bit of patience and with some really awesome friends that are kind to you and teach you stuff, you can fumble your way through like I did. So after much fiddling, I finally get it, and you can see on the screen uh, that it did successfully flash, which is uh, good to see, and it worked. So I'm going to resolder the jumper again um, because I ended up using the flux and um, took off some of the solder and cleaned it up just so the four pins for the SWD um, was working. And now I'm applying the flux back on and now I'm applying the solder back on for these jumpers. So this, these jumpers uh, signify whether this device is right-handed or left-handed. So there is a position for both. I accidentally just cut the solder there, which was kind of a happy accident. So hopefully now with the capacitor replaced, the little adventure that I went down, um, these were ordered back, ooh, I think we got them in November, December of 2023. And just now, having all the pieces and it fixed and the software working to actually test it for the first time. Um, so I'm actually quite excited. Never know in a project how quickly or, or what, what, which of the pieces will break and when all the pieces will not be broken and it will kind of magically work, especially in something like this because um, there's multiple points of failure that can happen. At, all along the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is kind of a enjoyable process, at least here. So I, I'm kind of gonna leave off this video. I end up installing the battery, getting it working, testing um, the parsing program for the data uh, on a USB that is receiving the Wi-Fi signal. And on top there, you see the UMIO, um, and that is the sensor that we're, it's the EMG sensor from Ultima Robotics that we're gonna be testing with U-Label. Seeing it turn on with the colors flash. Oh, and I missed the top piston. Ah, I remember I was using that to actually try to find the capacitor on the ground. Uh, I didn't use it to find it, believe it or not. It was just uh, using the naked eye. But there it is, that is U-Label. And it's a progress report, uh, February 21st of 2024. I really appreciate you guys. Please like or subscribe if you like my content. And please check back soon. Hope to share more updates. Let's see if we can make a positive difference in this world.